good morning everybody now i'll start the uh, next component or maybe last component of the module 1 so first of all i'll try to focus on the what is the effect of the surface active elements so you know in welding process that apart from the conductive heat transfer that actually happens within the oil pole there is a considerable amount of the material flow or maybe fluid flow occurs uh, within the oil pool. So, in that case that fluid flow actually takes a major role to determine the fusion zone shape and most of the cases uh, we normally um, neglect uh, this fluid flow effect and most uh, we try always try to do the heat transfer analysis by using the only heat conduction happens within the oil pool. So, that, that means we generally assume the stationary molten oil pool, but very intuitively if you look into in depth the analysis of the uh, oil pool the molten metal that actually flow one specified direction and that that flow actually driven by the different driving forces mainly the surface tension force is the mainly responsible for the liquid metal flow within the oil pool and of course, indirectly that flow also other way affect the shape and size of the oil pool. But there is a one question is that composition uh, of this molten pool sometimes play an important role in the nature of the material flow within this small oil pool. So, one one of the such interesting elements of, uh, of analysis in the material flow that is called surface active elements. So, in simplified way surface active elements actually influence the surface tension force. The surface tension force means between the liquid molten pool and shielding gas the surface tension force act. So, now we will try to look into the what is the nature and the direction of the surface tension force and how this surface tension force actually influenced by the surface active elements. And of course, this indirectly the surface active elements influence us changes the magnitude of the surface tension force and that surface tension force actually influence the nature of the material flow. So, of course, the main main factor or main driving force for the fluid flow is the surface tension force apart from the uh, buoyancy force or if in arc welding process if there is a there may be the effect of the uh, electromagnetic force or there may be effect of the plasma force that comes from the creation of the arc and that actually influence, but the influence of the plasma force, buoyancy force and uh, the electromagnetic force may be uh, less impact on the material flow, but surface tension force is the most important driving force or most significant force that impact more on the material flow. So, definitely not only the surface tension force rather it is better to say the surface tension gradient, because the surface tension gradient also depends on composition of the metal. Uh, not only that also the it depends also the temperature. So, it is a is a as a function of the composition as well as temperature. Now, sometimes the small concentration of the surface active elements actually that actually affect the oil pool shape. For example, if we consider the pure iron and for example, if we consider the steel and we uh, if we assume the steel is having the binary system iron plus one surface active element. So, between the pure iron and this binary alloy of uh, iron that actually in these two cases the nature of the metal flow can be differed depending upon the, the uh, presence of the surface active elements in the second case. So, small concentration of the surface active elements actually affects the shape of the oil pool the in the way by simply changing the or altering the surface tension gradient. This is one way or 
then surface tension when there is a change of the surface tension gradient and there may be the changes in the direction of the fluid flow in the oil pool. So, when there is a change of the direction of the fluid flow in the oil pool that actually influence the shape of the oil pool, but in the composition there may be some impurities which are not actually surface active elements that may affect the oil pool shape in the way that impurities actually can react with the surface active element and they can form some other compound and that compound can prevent the action of the surface active impurity impurities by simply changing the their concentration uh, gradient or simply changing their uh, co concentration of the surface active element. So, that way they it may be a complex phenomena, but if we try to analyze the effect of the surface active elements we consider that it is a binary alloy system. So, based on that it is easy to explain the effect of the surface active elements. Definitely surface tension is always a function of temperature. So, that temperature dependent. So, that surface tension force we need to another point or two point of view one is the concentration dependent assuming as well as the temperature dependent. So, based on these two points of view we can try to analyze the effect of the surface tension force. So, that magnitude and the direction of the surface tension gradient that actually influence the material flow within the oil pool. So, in single term that is called the the material flow within the oil pool is basic that is called the Marangoni convection. So, normally what happens the Marangoni convection mode in this case if you see the first case the first figure that surface tension actually decreases with increase in te temperature. So, that means surface tension for decreasing with increasing temperature in in case of welding process exactly at the center point temperature becomes the maximum and away from this center point the temperature actually decreases. So, that means there exists some temperature gradient from center to the outward periphery of the oil pool and accordingly the surface tension also, uh, also varies from uh, uh, that nature of the surface direction of the surface tension force uh, depends on the this variation of the temperature. So, that can be represented that temperature and the surface tension in, in this in this um, figure that the gradient actually is a negative uh, gradient. So, in this case the presence of this negative gradient actually creates the normal oil pool normally having the width width is more and depth is less in this case. Now, what happens? So, without any presence of surface active elements this is the normal behavior of the material flow within the oil pool that can be represented the negative slope of the surface tension uh, negative slope of the surface tension with respect to temperature and then it creates the normal oil pool. But what happens if some small amount of the surface active elements is added that actually change the surface tension temperature coefficients to a positive value. So, adding of the surface active elements is basically change the slope so from negative to positive slope. So, when there is a change of the slope that typical nature of the behavior of the surface tension force or surface tension gradient is basically impact on the nature of the material flow. So, in this case if you the second case what happens since the surface tension the gradient changes from negative to positive gradient then accordingly the shape of the oil pool changes. So, in this case the oil pool uh, become narrower the width becomes narrower, but depth actually increases. So, other way we can say in the second case probably it is more advantageous if we try to achieve the high depth of penetration. So, as compared to the wider uh, wider width. So, second case the aspect ratio also increases with, with this in respect to the first case as well as the penetration also increases in the second case. So, the in the second case it is more desirable and that comes from simply basics uh, simply by simply adding some amount of the surface active elements. But 
of course, the quantity the amount or the concentration of the surface active elements also having some role not any amount of the surface active elements can change this surface tension gradient from negative to positive. So, what we understand from here that basically the presence of the surface active elements that actually overall it is affect the direction of the material flow and that, that actually influence the change of the whirlpool size and shape. So, this two types of mode we that is called the Marangani convection mode probably we observe in the whirlpool. Definitely the surface tension uh, of most of the liquid metals is substantially basically altered or changes by presence of the small amount of the surface active elements like oxygen and sulphur. Uh, normally practically observe in steel presence of oxygen and sulphur is certain quantity that actually acts as a surface active elements and they alter the surface tension force and the mode of the material flow and finally, the affect the size of the whirlpool. Now, presence of the surface active elements or agent in the liquid metal is significant and that is better represented by the temperature gradient of this uh, surface tension force and that temperature gradient of the surface tension force that actually changes from negative to negative to positive changes and depending upon the presence of the surface active agent in this case. So, the Marangoni convection the flow of the Marangoni convection within the oil pool that that actually influence the oil pool in presence of the in presence or absence of the surface active elements. So, one example is that presence of the sulphur and oxygen in steel normally observed in specifically stainless steel acts as a surface active elements. So, one practical example of the surface active elements we observe that 180 to 600 ppm within the final oil pool presence of oxygen in SS 304 that means stainless steel 304 grade stainless steel produce the maximum oil penetration with a certain specific oiling condition. So, that means there may be some optimum amount of the surface active elements that can we then we can get the maximum benefit of the we can achieve the maximum oil penetration. But if we further increase the amount of the surface active elements they does not influence the uh, surface active agent in this case. So, it we can we cannot increase penetration too much and if we abruptly increase the amount of the surface active elements, but at the same time if the very small quantity is the of the surface active elements also may not be beneficial to increase the depth of penetration. So, this optimum amount practically observed that uh, it actually gets the maximum benefit of the maximum penetration can be achieved. So, conclusion is from that presence of that surface active elements that some optimum quantity of the surface active elements is always beneficial to get the maximum depth of penetration in, in case of any welding process. So, we can further analyze this uh, uh, basically the surface tension force uh, effect of this uh, uh, surface active elements in the oil pool model. Here if you see that one binary system that means F E S. So, pure iron and sulphur. So, sulphur also can be can act as a surface active elements. See so, here we can see that it is a combined effect of three dimensional figure that once the surface tension force is the function of here the temperature as well as the activity uh, of sulphur that means uh, amount of the sulphur and temperature both actually is a makes a combined effect on the surface tension force and here you can see. So, this figure shows that nature of the surface tension force we can see that uh, with respect if you look into the with respect to the temperature. So, at certain temperature optimum temperature there is a surface tension force is maximum for for a fixed amount of the surface active element and other cases if you see that 
combined effect is very small amount of the surface tension force becomes very maximum it is a very small amount of the surface active element and probably at the high temperature. So, this three dimensional figure will be better explained in this way that this case that here the surface activity surface active elements is low in this case. So, very small amount of the surface active elements or I can say that there is no surface active elements. So, in this case that we try to represent the uh, Marangani convection nature of the Marangani convection in the oil pole like that. So, in, it is the in case of the pure F pure iron that means there is no surface active elements in this case a jet the depth direction and the on the top surface the what should be the oil pool width in this case. So, here the shear stress is basically acting from center to outward periphery. So, that actually try to drive the molten material from center to outward periphery and we can say it is try to create on this plane some material flow occurs in clockwise direction. So, with this nature of the material flow actually uh, try to increase the width of the molten pool and try to decrease the penetration of the molten pool. So, that means in case of pure iron that means without any effect of the surface active elements normally we can expect the wider width and the low depth of penetration depending upon the it depends on the nature of the material flow or nature of the Marangoni convection that happens within the oil pool. But in other cases if we look into this other part in this case metal is having considerable amount of the surface active elements. So, it is a I can say it is a binary system F E S system and is focus on that metal is having the considerable amount of the surface active elements and certain temperature it achieve at the certain temperature. So, in this case what happens that shear stress, shear stress we can find out that shear stress in this case the viscosity into velocity gradient, gradient something like that. So, that shear stress acting on the surface is not exactly outward direction it is acting the inward direction and that that shear stress is basically comes from the uh, effect of the nature of the surface tension force and then surface tension force and that shear stress is linked with the velocity gradient. So, that means that metal is flowing from outward periphery to the out center direction that means it will try to create the flow of the metal flow it is like that some anti clockwise direction it is completely reverse from the pure iron system pure AP system. So, when it is making the uh, clockwise material flow that impact on the final oil pool shape like that it actually decreases the weld width, but it try to increase the depth of penetration. So, that way that um, in this way basically that once it is surface tension force changes gradient changes with respect to temperature and the concentration of the surface active elements and that finally, it influence the Marangani convection of the oil pool and it basically impact on the shape of the oil pool. We can further try to look into uh, that try to present this thing that surface tension force temperature and these two cases one is the in case of iron it is a it is represented by the simply negative slope uh, that means, slope is less than 0 and this temperature coefficients of the surface tension we can say and other cases the A P S system. So, in this it is a binary system that means, it, it the A P S system it basically takes the include the effect of the surface active element. So, in this case with respect to temperature it reach the optimum value the positive slope up to certain point then the slope becomes 0 and then again uh, the further increment of the temperature the slope actually changes to the negative. So, up to that point the it behaves the completely different from the pure iron system, but when you cross the optimum point then the slope become again its slope becomes negative that means slope becomes negative means it is the 
similar phenomena similar situation like the pure iron. So, that means there is no effect of the surface active elements beyond certain optimum temperature. So, that is better explained in this way that shear stress can be uh, defined by the shear stress is acting of the uh, fluid uh, surface of the fluid uh, in terms of the first derivative of the surface tension force because surface tension force is basically represented by the force per unit length. So, then when it is derivative with respect to length then it becomes the uh, stress value. So, then shear stress is linked the surface tension force and then this surface tension force uh, derivative of the surface tension force can be uh, written in these two components one is the temperature differentiation of the surface tension force and second part is the temperature gradient. So, with this decomposition of these two components it helps to explain the effect of the surface tension force. So, that temperature gradient of the surface tension force it can be negative or positive depending upon the nature of the presence of the surface active elements or presence of the surface active elements. It can be for example, in case of pure system it becomes negative if it is having the surface active elements that slope becomes uh, positive. And the second component is the temperature gradient it is always negative because at the center point of the oil pool the temperature is the maximum and the outward periphery and the boundary the temperature becomes uh, less. So, that means temperature gradient is always negative in this case, but the nature of the stress. So, combining these two we can say that the shear stress acting on the layer of the uh, layer of the fluid uh, liquid metal uh, liquid metal they can be positive or negative that means their direction can can change depending upon this value of the temperature copies of the surface tension whether it is positive or negative depending upon this value the uh, sign of the or maybe um, magnitude and the we can say the magnitude and the direction of the shear stress it may change from positive to negative. So, here the shear stress in this direction uh, when there is a when uh, temperature coefficient of the surface tension is negative and uh, it is in the opposite direction when the coefficient of surface tension is the positive that means it is corresponds to the FES system that means presence of the any surface active element. So, in that way change of the sign of, of this uh, shear stress is basically acting on the uh, on the uh, top surface of the uh, liquid molten metal when it is interacting with the of course, with the shielding gas then there may be the they can change the direction of the material flow and accordingly the size and the shape of the metal uh, oil pool can also be changed. So, with this phenomena or this basic physical or basic observation from the effect of the surface active elements there are some allied process welding process are also developed by considering the effect of the surface active elements. So, that means if it is possible to add some amount of the surface active elements uh, within the oil pool uh, during the oiling process that can that can consider the positive effect of the surface active elements that means it can affect on the oil pool shape. So, but what are the different way to consider practically the uh, surface active elements becomes the final part of the oil pool. So, there are three different way uh, first is that uh, minor elements that means either oxygen or sulfur in general we consider these two com uh, components the minor elements can be added by adjusting first is the chemical composition of the base metal. This is the one way chemical composition of the base metal and uh, that means the surface active ele elements already becomes the part of the base metal and when you try to weld that base metal then there may be the effect of the surface active elements or there are other way also simply spreading the fluxes that means halides or oxides on the substrate material. So, simply making the different oxides the coating of the oxides on the on the material uh, is which is supposed to weld. So, in that way also 
it is possible to supply the surface active elements and there is the another way directly using this surface active elements uh, you in uh, <coughs> with the shielding gas that is another option. For example, sometimes the carbon dioxide gas CO2 can be used with the argon shielding gas and that here the oxygen can impact or act as a surface active elements to alter the uh, shape of the shape and size of the oil pool. But overall addition of the small amount of the minor elements to the base material significantly changes the oil penetration. So, based on this uh, three different way we can add the surface active elements there is a one development of the process that is called industry industrially aetic one activated T oiling process has been developed activated T oiling process means activated tungsten inert gas oiling process. So, in this uh, the activated T oiling process can be defined in uh, this, uh, this the following way that ATIC is the simply variant of the T oiling process or we can say the gas tungsten arc oiling process. So, what happens in this process that sometimes we use the uh, application of the thin coating 10 to 15 uh, micrometer thin coating of the activated flux uh, is added uh, on the specifically on the joint area before oiling. So, once it can be done before oiling and then we, we can do the normal T oiling process tungsten center gas oiling process or, no, the, or it is called also GTIW gas tungsten center oiling process. So, once we do the normal oiling process then this surface active elements actually affect on the and it finally changes the oil pool shape and size impact on the final oil joint properties basically. So, in this way we can the ATIC process is basically this is the way we can uh, overcome the uh, uh, conventional T oiling process by simply developing uh, uh, this process. So, of course, the ATIC is the activated T oiling process simply buying the coating amounts, but some researchers also develop that directly adding the surface active elements for example, carbon dioxide with the shield argon shielding gas and that can also be used as a modified T oiling process to include the effect of the surface active elements. But activated take different activated uh, activated T oiling process is here normally we use the, the coating of the uh, that uh, coating of the activated flux. So, that is the difference here. So, what are the typical advantages of this process that the basic advantage of this process is that it enables the single pass oiling of the higher thickness plates. So, single pass welding of the higher thickness plates and, and not necessary to do the uh, multiple welding because the it considerably increase the depth of penetration. So, multiple uh, passes is not required in this case that is the one significant advantage of this process and of course, enhance the productivity and reduce the consumption of the filler material in this case a residual stress can be reduced significantly. Uh, more than 70 percent and the weld joint are basically almost uh, distortion free distortion can be avoided using this activated T welding process and of course, the significant reduction in the cost of fabrication uh, uh, more than 50 percent in, in general and because uh, as compared to the uh, say normally T welding process is uh, low cost process as compared to the uh, oiling laser oiling processes. So, of course, the laser oiling we can achieve the high depth of penetration because of the high concentrated heat, but even T oiling also we can achieve the high depth of penetration only we need to modify this uh, by including the effect of the surface active plate elements, but practically when you try to use the inc incorporate the effect of the surface active elements we need to do a uh, prior investigation is required to find out the optimum quantity of the surface active elements of a specific welding system that is important to know. Because at any quantity or a <coughs> is may not possible to achieve the effect of the surface active elements positively. So, 
next topic is that apart from the effect of the surface active elements, we will look into the another interesting uh, welding process, which normally use welding of the uh, basically joining of the two pipes and the more efficiently with the less time the uh, with the low cost the pipes can be welded. So, that actually developed this process uh, um, from the uh, basic taking the basic principle of the arc welding process, but by incorporation of the uh, magnetic field here. So, this process is called magnetic impelled arc butt welding. So, what is the principle about this process? So, in a force welding process, so it is basically is a force welding process that actually rely on the electric arc to generate the necessary heating, but sometimes small melting can also happen and, and so that surface being the welded. So, what what happens that it is a it is a kind of first we heat the surface uniformly heat the surface and then after heating the surface we come into contact by the forge forging process and then it becomes the uh, it becomes welded after the forging process. So, in this case the arc actually it is a because more the cylindrical component is mostly used if you see the figure that two cylindrical component uh, can be joined here. So, arc is created at one point here between these two uh, between these two uh, circular component the arc is arc is created at one point. Then next point is that it is to uh, create the uniform arc throughout the whole circular section. So, first after creation of the arc then it spreads over through circular section. So, then when it is a melt uh, not heated and not uh, too much of melting little bit melting of this two surfaces happens. Then we simply do the press fitting of these two components and then it becomes welded. So, that is most easiest process in uh, for joining of the circular component, but what is the role of the magnetic field here? So, the basically magnetic field is created here to rotate the arc and, and after starting of the arc to rotate the arc the magnetic field is controlled in such a way that it spreads the rotate the arc. So, that it can create the arc between these two components throughout the whole circular section, but this magnetic field are basically generated with the permanent or the uh, permanent or uh, magnet or from the electromagnets but advantage of this process it creates very uniform heating at the joint. So, the heating part are rapidly brought under the pressure. So, quickly brought the under the pressure and the forging action uh, produces the final oil joint. So, what are the stages of the uh, magnetic impulse arc butt welding process? So, four basic steps first is the arc initiation of the arc then stabilization of the arc, arc rotation so that and then finally, upsetting Upset, <coughs> that means mechanical forging is required in this case also. So, these are the four basic steps first is the arc is initiated when the two joints are very close joints are slightly spaced with the applied voltage one point the applied voltage arc is created and second part is the the arc rotation starts is due to the interaction of the magnetic field and the electric field. So, due to the presence of the magnetic field the electric field that start the arc rotation. So, in after the start of starting of the arc rotation the moment of the arc once the moment of the arc gets established. So, moment of the arc becomes established and the arc velocity is then stabilized and results in the variable arc ring around the gap between the joints. So, first initiation of the arc and then stabilization of the arc and then electromagnetic field basically try to rotate the arc and once the arc rotate uniformly throughout the whole ring then it it try to create the uniform heat throughout the ring. So, a thin layer of the molten metal actually appears at the tube end. So, once it is done then rapidly the upsetting the upsetting force is applied. So, that 
the metals can be fused metals can be joined. So, if you look into the typical advantages and limitation of this process is that advantage is that very less loss of the metal is also very less in this case and uniform welding. So, that is the basic features when you try to join the welding of a pipe and probably this process is very much advantageous in as compared to the other conventional welding process because the rotation of the arc throughout the whole structure it actually try to create the uniform heat throughout the whole circular path of the pipe. So, that is the another advantage. So, that is called the uniform welding power consumption is may not be very high no H P person is required because using the creating the arc we basically melt the surface and then only we do the upsetting force. So, less material flash also required and no filler metal is not required in this case and of course, the other point of view that it is also reduce the uh, machine maintenance. But one limitation of this process is that if thickness is very high probably is the it is if it is more than 6 millimeter then it is difficult to weld using this process because at that at very high thickness it is difficult to maintain the uniform heating throughout the whole uh, circular path of the file. So, that this process is limited up to the uh, 6 millimeter so far. So, we find out the applications of this welding process in this um, typical that bar welding of the thin wall thin wall tubes is even thick wall tube also can be done, but thick uh, thick wall tubes having some certain limitation like uh, I just explained it is a around 6 millimeter thickness tube can be joined. Bar welding of the solid components can also be joined and for a larger area and then tube to plate tube to plate welding and tube to flange welding can also be done using this process, but this process is mainly applicable for the any circular or hollow kind of or basically tube kind of uh, components or materials. But what are the apart from this circular or very circular symmetric components, what are the other options optional features of the of this process is that it can weld tube to tube or tube to flange and can well basically irregular or non circular components uh, as easy as circular. So, sometimes even it is non uh, circular components can also be joined by this process. Uh, also, other one of the uh, the main optional feature of this things one of the first step methods of welding of the tube. Uh, or basically the welding of the pipes is uh, using uh, this process. So, oil industry basically the welding of the pipes quickly they can use uh, this process. Now, apart from all this process, so we this model we have tried to get some overall view of the different fusion welding processes, their basic principle, their application area uh, limitation. But there is a welding uh, overall subject if it is a vast area. Now, we will try to focus on that. Of course, uh, there are certain advantages, so much of development, some limitation also having, but here I try to summarize the few issues and challenges generally observed in the welding process. First significant point is that most of the fabrication industry that means around the arc welding process basically used more than 70 percent of the demand from the fabrication industry. So, that means, most usually in fabrication industry most usually welding process are the different variant of the arc welding process. This is the information. So, that several development of the arc welding process depending upon the need area applicability has been has been developed. Of course, if we look into other aspect for example, that thermit welding. So, need of this welding process actually to applic uh, apply in the remote area. So, there is no need of the uh, electrical connection in, in this case. So, that that is why this process has been developed from the application point of view the basically joining of the uh, railway track there 
uh, we can use remotely this process. So, in that case thermit welding process is more preferable more usable. So, in that sense of course, there are very precision or there are the uh, welding processes, but till uh, arc welding process is mostly usable process in case of the fabrication industry depending upon the availability or requirement of the welding process. Of course, cost is also another important factor. In contrast to that arc welding process, the other laser beam welding process or high beam energy welding process for example, high beam energy process means uh, laser welding process and electron beam welding process that using this process also we can produce the very precise joint with the uh, minimum defect or where there is a difficulty uh, of welding in the arc difficulty of joining materials in using the arc welding process in that case probably the high beam energy is the more uh, preferable welding process. So, where precision is the more significant and cost is not cost is not the important in that in that aspect probably the laser beam or electron beam welding process is more preferable. For example, aerospace industry most of the cases the welded components are from the electron beam welding process and that because electron beam welding process definitely it is a very costly process. So, that is a need and each and every type of welding process having their own uh, a merit and sometimes having the demerit their applic applicability area and it demands demands on the according to the cost on and their importance in, in terms of the accuracy of the oil joint finally. But of course, the one of the significant aspect in the welding of the high beam in, uh, intensity beam is that that excessively high concentration of the heat, but at the same times the rate of cooling is normally is very high in case of the high intensity beam welding process. So, rate of the high solidification and the cooling is normally we, we observe um, in case of uh, high beam energy process. So, that rate of cooling or solidification process that actually impact on the final uh, oil microstructure. So, apart from that there is a another challenges in the welding process of the aluminum welding process. If you see the most of the cases in welding of the aluminum using the conventional welding process is not easy like uh, other type of welding of the steels uh, and ferrous, ferrous materials. So, porosity in aluminum oils is the major challenge because aluminum exhibits 20 percent greater solubility of the hydrogen in the liquid state at a high temperature and that is gas may be entrapped and creates the porosity in the solidified oil. So, that solidified oil that becomes the part. So, if we use the in conventionally the other welding process the welding of the aluminum is uh, really very difficult. So, we can expect that the that, uh, probability of the formation of the oil defects will be more in case of the aluminum welding process. So, that is why not all the welding process is suitable for the aluminum welding process specifically sometimes specific design some modification of the welding process is required to join the uh, to join aluminum. In final welded st structure even fusion welding process the high distortion and cracks are also the other type of the problem. Here high distortion of the crack is basically uh, we observe that it the distortion is mainly comes from the the coefficient of the thermal expansion. And if we observe that the if happens during the solidification the after application of the heat the molten metal and molten becomes becomes solidified to the um, solidify and the solidified structure can from the solidification cracking may also occur. So, that solidification cracking is mainly due to the if there is a large change in the volume or basically volume sinkage is very high during the solidification. So, that actually creates either solidification cracking or creates a, a large amount of the distortion in the final oil structures or is or it can create the uh, solidification uh, cracking. So, that is another problem specifically this problem is uh, related to the 
large amount of the volume shrinkage in during the welding process and it depends on the typical properties of the uh, mat material that volume shrinkage. But if you look into this figure right hand side that it is a simply joining of the titanium alloy to oil and we can see there is a if plate is very high length. So, we can observe there is some distortion. So, that distortion also comes or that is related to the amount of the residual stress generated within the body itself and finally, it creates the uh, distortion. So, if we if you want to overcome this kind of problems. So, definitely we need to know the structural changes after the solidification or solidification behavior how it needs to study uh, in detail uh, to predict the solidification cracking or different type of metal. So, it is to uh, more or less the uh, metallurgical structure or changes during the oiling process. So, this is different aspect we will having one module to uh, look into that uh, metallurgy of oiling processes also. So, in that process it is mainly the how the metallurgical structure it depends on the uh, different uh, the rate of the cooling during the solidification process. But of course, distortion solidification cracking this kind of problem will always be there during the oiling process only thing is that how we can minimize uh, this kind of problems of the different processes. Other issues of oiling process is that basically the oiling of the titanium alloy and of course, titanium alloy using the uh, normal arc oiling process is really very challenging because titanium actually at high temperature titanium or always react with the oxygen, nitrogen and hydrogen at certain temperature and then molten oil pool must be protected from this atmospheric contamination till it cools down to the certain temperature. So, that is a real problem. So, it is may not be too much severe in case of the uh, welding of the steel, but welding of the titanium is uh, it is a it is a very difficult because it easily react with the oxygen and hydrogen and the oxygen becomes the uh, part of the final oil joint. So, oils can contaminate it with the oxygen and it actually creates a very brittle and hard. So, that is why to avoid the atmospheric contamination normal most of the cases we do the welding of the titanium alloy uh, inside a, a chamber or some modification can be done when you try to do the welding of the titanium alloy. So, that this oxidation problem can be at least it can be reduced. So, the one of the methodology of welding of the titanium alloy is that if we uh, change simply using the fixture, fixture using for the welding of the two, two uh, seat plate for example. So, here we can use the copper plate and we can use the purging extra sealing gas. So, extra sealing gas actually comes from this uh, small hole if you look into this uh, fixture. So, that actually protect the uh, titanium uh, alloy uh, during the welding process. So, this is the one of the easiest solution for welding of the titanium alloy. So, it is this type of extra extra arrangement of the sealing gas may not be required in the when you try to do the welding process simply either plasma arc welding or T tungsten in a gas welding process. So, that is why to protect it uh, this uh, oxidation problem to some extent in case of welding of the titanium. Another uh, advantage uh, that means, as compared to the fixed welding process there is the recently there is a develop so much of development uh, of the fixed state welding happens. This is the one kind of the solid state welding process and if we see uh, this solid state welding process that here also the weld can be created in the different zone that weld nugget in friction sterling process. So, let us see the what is the friction sterling process. Friction sterling process simply two components are joined by steering of the uh, plasticized material. So, that temperature should be controlled in such a it should be well below at least uh, below the melting melting point temperature. So, frictional heat is generated and the plasticized material is basically mixing and it finally makes the 
uh, well joined. So, typical characteristic of this uh, solid state welding process is that that it creates some nugget zone and that nugget zone is basically defined by the certain temperature thermomechanically affected zone, heat affected zone and unaffected base metal. So, to do these things we need the design of the tool is important to know here that the different type of the tools, uh, tool probe, cylindrical profile, taper cylindrical having thread and square threaded triangular shape of the. So, these are the different different types of tools can be used uh, for the welding purposes in the design of the different types of tool is mainly attributed to that, that material flow or mixing of the material can be ensured to when to expect a the good oil joint. So, this friction state welding is the recent development uh, in the solid state welding process and nowadays people are also using uh, uh, this is also having so many advantages as compared to the fusion welding process. So, like that uh, many problems of the fusion welding process can be avoided if you try to use the this solid state welding process typically the friction state welding process. So, since there is no melting of the work piece, uh, so the problems like the porosity, solidification cracking and thermal distortion basically or almost physically non existence. But only difficulty is that uh, friction state welding process uh, uh, limitation is that if there is a insufficient material flow then it can create uh, some defects. But in general the harder the work piece if the strength limit is also there if the work piece is very hard material then the more stronger of the tool material is also required. And because the weld actually evolves simply as a function of the geometry of the tool nature of the geometry of the tool what is the tool rotational speed and the what is the welding piece or actually impact on the final oil gel quantity in the solid state welding process. But issues are challenges in this process is that and challenge mainly if we find out that insufficient material flow if you look into this figure that it is a welded joint, but we can observe some small gap. So, that means there is a this happens due to the material flow is not good then it can create this kind of problem also and right hand side also it is a good oil joint and that means in solid state welding process joining these two component. So, therefore, it is extremely important to identify the appropriate composition of the tool appropriate combination of the tool geometry and the other welding parameters through rotational speed and also welding speed that actually ensure the proper metal flow then we can use um, this combination of the parameters and we can expect the good oil joint. But other side the limitation of this process is that because tool experience the uh, severe amount of the stress rotation. So, wear of the tools is very important of this and cost of the tool also a very important matter in this process. And of course, this process is limited to up to certain uh, if it is very high hard material is very difficult to welding this process. So, still it is not commercially used specifically for welding of the very high hardness material. So, in that case the only solution is the fusion welding process, but few cases it is this process has been uh, get we can expect a good oil joint uh, solid state welding process and uh, in this case the difficulties or having porosity and cracking all this phenomena can be avoided this type of welding process this solid state welding process. But another uh, issues on in welding process that is called the friction welding of nickel based super alloy and titanium alloy. So, this type of welding material we generally use the friction welding. So, of course, the fusion welding of the nickel based alloy super alloy and the titanium alloy is very much difficult because of their high melting temperature and the and at the same time high reactivity uh, with the at at the very high temperature. So, that is the limitation of using the fusion welding process specifically the nickel based super alloy and titanium alloy. So, friction welding is the most efficient method by joining of this 
uh, materials in this very critical applications uh, probably in case of aerospace industry. Now, other welding processes for example, laser beam welding process of aluminum and titanium alloy is another at alternative method. So, laser beam can also be used welding of the aluminum or titanium alloy. We know the different type of the solid state laser and gas lasers are also there and uh, that laser beam, beam can be produced the very narrow weld and with the minimum heat affected zone and high depth of penetration and small distortion as compared to the other arc welding process. So, in that sense the difficulty of welding aluminum at in very conventional arc welding process. So, that can be used in the laser beam welding process. So, probably for example, in welding of the titanium alloy if we try to use the laser welding process. So, extra shielding gas sometimes may not be required probably the shielding provided by the uh, laser is during the laser welding process is sometimes is advantageous or other way the welding can be done this for this materials in a separate vacuum chamber. But mainly, mainly in case of that uh, 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 large panel fuselage that means, what is the main body of the aircraft is basically is we generally apply the uh, laser beam welding process. So, in because simultaneous uh, welding from both sides that means, path of the welding in this case is very important. So, if we choose proper path of the welding process that means, simultaneous welding from the both side that actually try to minimize the distortion in a very large or spherical or cylindrical panels that used for the main part of the uh, aircraft body. And uh, electron beam that is the another welding process that is the electron beam which is welding process which is the mo mostly used in case of the aerospace industry. And that beam that electron beam welding process in aerospace industry mainly use in the in a vacuum and that actually ensures no gas contaminations um, and that actually uh, provide the very high depth of penetration irrespective of the type and the nature of the uh, a surface condition of the material and this is very proven or uh, uh, widely accepted uh, critical aerospace widely accepted for the critical aerospace material. So, most of the aerospace components is uh, used in case of uh, used by the electron beam welding process. So, critical aerospace components such as gear, uh, compressor, rotor this type of uh, component of the aerospace industry they actually uh, using the electron beam welding process because here the defect free welding is the main constraint here. So, that for therefore, electron beam is the only is the good solution for the one of the approved joining process specifically used for the aerospace industry. But one main challenge of this uh, electron beam welding process is that there is a in electron beam welding process when you try to join the to dissimilar material and because electron beam is the flow of the electron with a defined path and there is maybe the, the thermoelectric magnetic field uh, effect and that actually better explained by the Seebeck effect. Because of that the path of the electron beam actually get deflected in one side of the material depending upon the mag magnetic permeability of the both the material. For example, combination of the copper and steel most of the cases the electron beam is basically deflected towards the steel material. So, it is very difficult to focus using uh, uh, this different combination of the uh, material and uh, exactly at the joint interface. So, that is the one of the difficulty of the or challenges exist in case of the electron beam welding process. Issues now recent development also happens in the fusion welding process that actually occurs. Uh, in case of the uh, so much of development happens the micro scale oiling process. So, micro scale oiling process is nothing but the reduction in uh, scale of application and from the conventional oiling processes. For example, the development happens so far in micro oiling processes is that resistance oiling process is basically scaling down in case of micro scale application arc welding for example, TIG, MIG and plasma these are the 
uh, not exactly meek basically tick and plasma is mostly developed uh, the application in the micro welding cases and the laser and finally, the electron beam welding process that all scaling down to the micro scale application. So, definitely nowadays the specifically the different um, small very small components in the very smaller scale when you try to join then it is uh, we generally use the different micro welding processes and that micro welding process says this typically micro welding process resistance TIG and plasma micro welding processes laser electron beam welding processes has been developed, but electron beam welding processes normally we use the electron beam welding process to to appear the high high density of the high uh, density of the uh, high heat generation and the it is a very focused on small area and high depth of penetration in that purpose normally we use the electron beam welding process, but in micro scale application the principle simply by modifying the scanning electron microscope optics uh, then the electron beam welding has been developed in the micro scale application. So, in that case maximum 6 watt power can be generated in the micro scale application, but most widely uh, applicable or uh, most uh, preferable welding process in micro scale application is the laser, because laser can be very precisely controlled and power can be scaled using even using the different type of the pulse. So, that is why laser welding is more advantageous in the micro scale application process, but main challenge of this micro scale welding process is that geometric precision uh, cost of the equipment is the uh, main challenge, because sometimes we need to do the fixture design of the fixture and handling of the small component basically roboting are can be used. And of course, uh, if uh, micro scale application sometimes we need the development of the whole welding setup under the microscope. So, in that sense the cost of this equipment or cost of the process becomes very high and that is the main challenge of the micro scale welding process. So, this with this several issues and challenges existing in the welding process. Uh, I conclude um, that first module of this uh, for basic fundamentals of the welding and joining process. Here I have tried to give some idea, the basic mechanism, basic principle of the different type of welding process, different direction, advancement of the different types of welding processes also happen and that what are the current issues and what are the current development in this welding process also happen and that try to uh, explain uh, this uh, module not in brief, but in the uh, try to give some uh, in the introductory level, but in the subsequent modules we will try to discuss in details about the different types of the welding process or different directions or, or the different development happens uh, in the welding process. So, thank you very much for your kind attention.